All right, YouTube, so today I'm gonna be doing a uh, kind of unboxing slash what comes in the box for a uh, CZ Checkmate Parrot. For those of you that don't know, the Checkmate is kind of like a, uh, a CZ's version of an open race gun for USPSA and IPSC. And, um, you know, it's got the full armor mount and uh, compensator on the front. So, you know, this, this thing's meant for competition. But uh, one thing that I haven't seen a lot of info or videos on is the uh, Checkmate Parrot. And um, you'll see right now why it's called that. It's very colorful. But uh, there's only a handful of these made every year. And it seems that there's not a lot of info on them. It seems uh, also that CZ's been kind of changing what comes in the box with some of their guns lately. And, um, you know, I kind of want to highlight that and what uh, go over what you get as far as right now. It's uh, April 2019. So as far as my understanding goes, there's a few things missing or changed that some people may not be familiar with. So this is not my first time opening the box. I actually did go and shoot this today. And I'll put video on that later, but, uh, you know, I, like I said, I want to go over this because it doesn't seem to be a lot of info out for people that may be curious about buying one of these. It seems there's a lot more on sale this year than there have been in the past. So here we go. So right away in the box, uh, you can see, like I said, I have messed with this gun a little bit. Uh, one of the first things is, uh, the grips. So I ended up, and actually let me clear this before we go any further. So I ended up actually switching the grips here. Reason for that is I really like these scales, especially for competition. But if you see what the gun will come with installed are these custom colored, custom anodized CZ grips. On the left side, you'll have this kind of yellow goldish one. And then on the right side, you'll have the orange one seen like with the tactical sport orange. So. Again, since this is the Parrot, it's a special edition, all these fancy little colors, and that's why it's called the Parrot. Moving forward, um, as you can see, we have a red trigger there. Kind of matches these base pads as well. So, um, the red base pads are a nice touch, but if you're shooting competition, which most people buying one of these, I'd imagine, are shooting competition, uh, these base pads are kind of useless. Reason for that is that most people will end up swapping out the base pads for uh, custom ones that'll allow greater capacity. Um, these ones right here, once installed on these magazines, will bring the capacity up to about 23, 24, instead of the uh, standard 20 rounds that these are made to fit. So again, a nice touch, but kind of useless. Uh, ended up actually getting some orange base pads with my tax board orange that never got used because of that reason as well. Moving forward, we do have a green magwell, again, to go along with that kind of parrot theme. One thing that I do kind of find disappointing with the gun that's so expensive uh, is that uh, the magwell does not really blend into the actual frame of the gun. As you can see, there's some pretty kind of rough edges here. And uh, I'm actually gonna have to go through that with a Dremel and kind of smooth that out. I had to do the same with my uh, Tactical Sport Orange, which uh, I'll show right here. So with the Tactical Sport Orange, I had to come through with a Dremel and kind of hit these rough edges now, the reason for that was so that these magazines could uh, move in a lot easier. And again, I'll clear this for any of you over there at home freaking out. Um, but again, having to smooth this was kind of a disappointment considering that, you know, I spent several hundred dollars on a gun that's meant to be ready to go for competition straight out of the box. And uh, it ends up still needing some modification to it. So that issue does still exist with the Checkmate. Uh, but once you've done it once, it's a pretty easy fix. Moving forward, we have a nice little purple slide racker. Um, I don't know that I'll keep this slide racker, maybe just because it is that purple color. But the shape of it's kind of weird, and I prefer to have it on the left, but when it's on the left side, it kind of blocks the safety. So um, for right now, I'm running it on the right. The next thing we're looking at here is the uh, optic mount. And uh, this is kind of a nice, uh, I'd say, navy blue, royal blue color. Uh, it, it looks good on the gun. One thing I think is, uh, well, I know is new with these is these little holes in the, in the side of the optic mount here. And uh, this is a new thing that CZ's done, apparently. And what it is is, as you can see, um, it allows the mounting of a thumb rest. A lot of aftermarket thumb rests would use these same uh, two or three screws that the uh, optic mount uses. 
And because of that, either the thumb rest would kind of start to loosen up over time, or the optic would loosen up, which is obviously bad because you lose your zero. So um, pretty good on them for adding in these holes and um, you know providing a thumb rest stock. And it's nice not having to buy a, an aftermarket thumb rest between fifty to seventy-five dollars, and then have to either custom mill the frame or the optic mount, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, apparently the uh, the screws also go through the frame or go into the frame as well, providing even more stability for the optic mount. If you guys have ever seen videos of an open gun shooting in slow motion, you'll know that they, uh, they, uh, they the optic actually moves a lot under all that recoil. So now let's get into the contents of the box. So as you saw, we have a few 20 round magazines. These are stock. You do also get one big stick for competition. Um, and I think the uh, length of this one is right at about 165 millimeters. Uh, again, I ended up adding a, a CZ custom base pad to it, make it 170. And this actually brings the capacity from 26 rounds up to about 29 if I really jam it in there. Um, another kind of uh, annoying thing about these big sticks though is that they do need tuning out of the box. A lot of people may not know that, but if you look here, even with just a couple, um, you know, shooting a couple rounds through this magazine, there's some pretty heavy scraping there on both sides. And uh, what most people end up having to do to tune these is kind of pinch this in a little bit. And what that does is align the bullets as they come out uh, a little bit better instead of uh, having issues feeding. So one of the main issues with these, if you don't tune them, is that the bullets will kind of nosedive. They'll dig into the bottom of your uh, feed ramp. So again, a little bit disappointing, but it is what it is. Along with that, you do get this kind of cheapy magazine loader. If you're just running the stock magazines and springs, I could definitely see the need for this. Uh, the stock springs are pretty tight, pretty uh, pretty hard to load up when they're brand new. But I never use this. I just have a, uh, a mag lula or up lula mag loader. Another bag we have here is just a uh, handful of Allen keys. This will allow you to adjust anything that you might need to on the gun. Obviously, you got a larger one a few smaller ones and uh, these are important for a handful of screws on the gun first off one of the main ones that i've seen uh, needing to be adjusted in the past is a magwell if you don't loctite this it will come loose on you after about three or four hundred rounds shooting major power factor might be less with minor uh, and then if you need to remove the optic mount for whatever reason you have another allen screw there and then you can also remove the slide racker with one of those uh, allen wrenches so um Nothing too crazy. Excuse me, that's a torque screw on the frame. But again, nothing too crazy. It's nice that they provide the uh, the tools to take it apart if you need to. Okay, so the next set of goodies that will come with your gun is actually a couple uh, slide catch, slide stop pins. Um, one of these actually comes installed on the gun. And what it is is if you want your uh, slide to lock back on an empty magazine, this will allow you to do that. Nice thing about the Checkmate, at least with this Parrot, is that it came with two. So um, if you're a CZ owner or you're familiar with CZ guns for competition, these slide pins are only good for about three to 5,000 rounds. Um, even CZ recommends replacing them at that point. Um, and for most people, they end up just breaking. So it's nice that they do have a couple extras in there if you do like having your slide lock back. Um, they also include an extra extractor. Uh, I haven't had any issues with mine on my Tax Sport Orange, and that's at about 3,000 rounds in. But again, nice to have those spare parts. I'm sure they've probably had enough complaints in the past about certain parts breaking. So along with that, we get four takedown pins. Um, these are nice because they, uh, for USPSA at least, they don't lock your slide back on an empty magazine. Most of the time for USPSA, you shouldn't be going to slide lock anyway. Uh, for some of you IDPA folks, uh, you won't even be shooting a checkmate anyway, so it's not a concern. I actually do prefer this and I installed one in my gun right away, as you can see here. Um, and the reason I like that is because when you're putting your thumb on the uh, thumb rest, it doesn't get in the way as much. So it's nice to have a few extra of these. If I ever run out of these for whatever reason, I can go back to the one that has the uh, slide lock back, but shouldn't need to. And now moving forward, uh, for anyone who knows, the uh, Checkmate is a neat gun in that it actually comes with a sight tracker and a rear sight if you decide to run the gun in limited. Now, being that it's nine millimeter, you'll have to run it in limited minor. Even if you're shooting major, it's not allowed for uh, limited in 9mm. So you have this uh, rear sight, 
as well as the sight tracker in the front. I don't know as far as uh, zero how that goes, if it's always spot on or not. Haven't tested it myself and probably won't in the near future. Uh, you also do get just the uh, thumb rest that comes with the uh, tax board orange if you decide to take off the optics mount and run it in limited. All right, so next up, another uh, bag full of Allen keys, Allen screws. Um, but these are actually for the uh, Seymour slide ride that comes with your checkmate. So every checkmate does come with a slide ride um, from the factory. I'm not sure on the MOA for these. I think it's uh, six, six or eight. It's it's pretty decently sized dot. But um, this Allen key, I'm not entirely sure exactly. I think it's for the uh, the top right here. Yeah, it's so this one's for the uh, if you need to replace the battery. This is the battery compartment lid, or if you want to change the uh, diode, so you want a different size dot, you can actually do that with these uh, Seymour slide rides. Um, then there's a smaller Allen key in there, and uh, this one's good for these uh, windage and elevation lock screws. So if you want to adjust your windage, you need to unlock this screw first before you can adjust the windage screw here. And then if you want to adjust elevation, you need to unlock this, uh, this screw before you can adjust it here up top. So I'm trying to get that in the video a little bit better. Um, there is a neat little thing. Uh, that they lock like that. If you've ever seen a slide ride before, you should know or be pretty familiar with this. One other thing that comes in this same bag, or actually a couple other things, are uh, additional screws for the uh, the thumb rest. If you decide, or you um, if you ever remove that thumb rest or happen to lose one of these screws, uh, these are just a couple backups. One final thing, and I thought this was kind of unimportant when I first saw it. Um, it looks like a zinc plated, I don't even know, it's not a. It's not really an Allen key, but uh, this is actually important in uh, disassembly of the gun. This will help you get the uh, recoil spring and uh, guide rod out uh, with that compensator in. So I'll kind of quickly demonstrate how that works. Just, uh, just know that this is important. I thought it was kind of useless when I first saw it, and then I tried to take down the gun and couldn't figure out how to take it down without this. So... For those of you who don't know how to disassemble a CZ, it's pretty simple. Um, I like to pull the hammer back so it's easier to pull the slide back, but you'll line up these two notches right here on the back of the frame. And um, from there, you will push the takedown pin from the right side out and just come straight out. From there, you'll be able to remove the slide. Now, as far as takedown goes for this, it is a little bit confusing if you haven't done it before. So I'm gonna kind of go over this as best I can. Basically, what you need to do is push the barrel out and then forward. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna expose a little tiny hole on the recoil spring, or excuse me, the guide rod. And um, from there, you'll insert this little key long ways like that. And what this does is it locks that recoil spring in position and uh, allows you to pull it out. And then uh, from there, you can unscrew the barrel, or unscrew the compensator from the barrel and pull the barrel out. And now we have to try and reassemble it. This is probably one of the most annoying parts. So again, to reassemble, you just insert it, pull it back out, pull out this uh, screw, and let it fall back. Perfect. And then for reassembly, you'll just go ahead and line up those notches again. And uh, with the uh, takedown pin, you're going to want this little notch stand to go in first, facing up. You just push it through the hole, and as your gun gets uh, older, or you know, as this gets more worn down, the pin's pretty easy to get in. But for the first little while, you'll probably need something hard to push it in. Um, I don't recommend banging on it with a hammer or anything, just because you may uh, damage the finish, or even on the frame or mount. So, um, with that, the gun is reassembled and ready to go. So one of the things that some people may be wondering about is the extra barrel. For those of you who don't know, usually the checkmates come with a second barrel, and that's to uh, run the gun in limited with that sight tracker and uh, rear sight. Unfortunately, it seems that CZ has either completely skipped that on the Parrot or has decided to stop including them with all checkmates. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but as of right now, again, uh, April 2019, this gun does not have an extra barrel. And I may maybe see it as like cutting costs because they had to anodize all these parts with these custom colors but it seems like a kind of lame way to cheap out you know i can't imagine these especially if they have the resources available i can't imagine the cost to anodize these parts is 
enough to kind of justify skipping a barrel. You know, a barrel's a few hundred dollars if you buy it from CZ's website. And uh, anodizing, even if you did it on your own, would probably only be like a hundred, maybe 150 max. So again, something they kind of skipped out on and something I was a little bit disappointed in. But yeah, so this gun, this parrot was made in December 12th or test fired December 12th, 2018. So this is a pretty new production gun, uh, just a few months old. And yeah, it seems that CZ's just cutting costs in a few spots, which is fine, I guess. But again, when you pay over a few thousand dollars for a competition gun, that may not be something that, you know, you want missing from the box. One other thing that I was a little bit disappointed about, and I'll see if you can catch it here, is the, uh, and maybe the standard with checkmates, but um, the barrel is not polished on this gun. And I, like I said, I don't know if that's standard with all checkmates, but if you look at my Tactical Sport Orange, um, it's a little bit dirty right now, but the barrel is completely polished. And I, I, it's debatable how much of an effect it has on the operation of the gun. But again, when you're kind of missing little, little things like that in a gun expensive as this, it kind of makes you question what the issue is in providing that same service. So. Maybe it has to do with uh, them having to cut the threads into the barrel. I'm not really sure. I'm not really going to take the time to polish it myself either. All right, so there it is. Um, again, this was meant to be more of just kind of a breakdown of what's in the box for a Checkmate Parrot. Um, this, I think, is going to be probably one of the first YouTube videos to cover that. So if there's any additional questions, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Um, I'll try and reply as soon as possible. Thanks for watching. Okay, so just a couple things to note about this uh, shooting clip is that this was shooting minor ammo. So it was about 132 PF out of my usual guns. Um, and this is just messing around. We were just shooting a steel target. I kind of wanted to get the zero in on the dot a little bit, and he was trying to zero a rifle. So this is just towards the end, and got a couple clips of us shooting. And my buddy here is not a competitive shooter by any means, but as you can see, the recoil is pretty manageable even for him. 